Let's say you owned 20,000 Bitcoin worth around $600 million. And like most investors during a bear market, you wanted to sell it all off to fund your next set of real estate investments. Selling 20,000 individual Bitcoins would probably cause a mass market movement. So instead, you go ahead and you register for what is called a dark pool. This way you can sell your shares in privacy and not have such an immediate drastic effect on the market. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education. And here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can easily understand them. In this video, we're going to explain what exactly a dark pool is and how they work. Let's dig in. So first off, what is a dark pool? When you hear the word dark pool, a lot of people feel uneasy about the way that investors are taking advantage of the market. But when we heard about them, they piqued our interest. You see, the story that we used in the beginning of this video is exactly what a dark pool is. It's a platform that is used to hide large transactions from the general public. Now this can be used to avoid slippage, to avoid causing prices to plummet, to avoid the fear that comes from seeing a whale selling their coins, or just to get an average price for a large number of crypto. Let's go over each of the benefits of these real quick before explaining exactly how a dark pool actually works. So number one, avoiding slippage. Slippage is the term for what happens when you put in an order to sell a Bitcoin for $35,000 but it actually sells for 34980 To make sure that it's sold immediately, you have to give it some give, and this give is also called slippage. The more crypto you are buying or selling, the more slippage you will have to be comfortable with. Number two is to avoid causing prices to plummet. So whenever you dump a bunch of crypto back into the market, you can effectively change the price of crypto. Due to how supply and demand works, when you add more supply, it'll cause the demand to drop. And when the demand drops, so will the price. Number three is to avoid the fear of a whale selling. So blockchains are really cool technology, but most of them are open for anyone's eyes to look at. This means any large wallet holder is constantly under the eye of professional traders. If they see a whale dumping their coins, they may get scared and think that the whales know something that they don't. And then this will cause them to follow suit and then eventually crash the price even more. In short, dark pools are a great way to hide trades. Some dark pools actually allow you to trade your hardware wallet as opposed to making a crypto transfer. Lastly, number four is to get an average price. Some dark pools allow traders to walk in and say, I have 20,000 Bitcoins to sell and I want a guaranteed price for all of them. What can you give me? Then the dark pool will return a price that they can afford and that will allow the seller to know exactly how much they can actually sell their Bitcoins for instead of guessing how much they may be worth. So moving on, let's get into how a dark pool actually works. So they work in an interesting way, and they're usually for large investment portfolios that are selling a large amount of crypto each and every day. Let's use the platform Kraken, for example. Kraken actually has a specific dark pool where they have buyers and sellers committing to a certain amount of Ethereum or Bitcoin. For the Kraken dark pool, the requirements are currently $100,000 of Bitcoin or $50,000 of Ethereum. Now, most dark pools use what is called limit orders compared to market orders. These are actually really technical terms which come from the traditional finance world. In fact, if you've ever played RuinScape, a limit order is like the grand exchange, where you set the price of something you want to sell, and then maybe it will be filled, but maybe not. However, you get to determine the price at which it sells, just not the time. Market orders, on the other hand, look at all those other limit orders out there and then interact with the orders that are already out there to create instantaneous trades with just a little price difference. This way, you get an instant trade, but you pay a little bit of slippage, which we went over earlier. Either way, you get to choose one variable. Limit orders allow you to pick the price. Market orders allow you to pick the time. Most dark pools use limit orders so that the seller can ensure they make a certain amount from each trade even if the trade takes a month to complete. Now, with the word dark being in this phrase, a lot of people are wondering, are dark pools bad? This is the part where many people actually have an issue. They don't really know if dark pools are really good or bad, at least for average investors like us. In fact, in traditional finance, dark pools are only available to people with a large, large amount of money. So it automatically feels secretive and cultish. However, we are an educational and entertainment channel, so we want to help you understand the pros and cons of them just a little bit more. So one of the main issues that people have is that these investors are trying to be secretive with their money, which actually is one of the benefits of using a blockchain. You can stay anonymous. However, some people believe since whales have a lot of power, they should be careful with that power and use it responsibly. In the end, 
Whales are simply investors like us, trying to make a profit or advance a project. Next up, we're going to talk about market manipulation, because market manipulation is probably the largest concern investors have when they first hear about dark pools. Can't they crash the price? Can they spike it too? Well, in fact, that is one of the reasons these investors are actually using a dark pool. They want to trade their crypto without causing huge price volatilities. Nevertheless, Moving large amounts of money can always cause price volatility, so the option for that investor to come back in as a non-anonymous user and buy a bunch of Bitcoin to cause a price spike is still there. So finishing up, dark pools are complicated yet beautiful applications within the crypto world, but we don't want to decide for everyone. We want to know what you think. What do you think about dark pools? Should they be there or should they be banned? We're actually not even sure if we could ban them if we wanted to. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed it. We really hope that you've learned something. And most of all, we hope to see you in the next video.